Many of you may have once been fans of Vice and Vice Media. And based on the title of this video, you came and you're looking at it, you understand what we're going to be talking about. Vice is dying or dead. I mean, to be completely honest, I think it's a skin suit being worn by weird, woke, plastic people who don't actually know what made Vice cool and entertaining. But we have this story from Airmail. I'm not super familiar with what it is. But uh, this, this guy, William D. Cohen, talked to Vice employees and executives about what happened to the company and how it's basically crumbled. Vice at one point was worth $5.7 billion. You may remember back in the day, those, those amazing videos. I mean, do you remember, do you ever see the video of when I went to Ukraine and I did the on the ground thing and it was very straightforward? Did you see the stuff we did in like Egypt or whatever? I actually field produced a documentary about these people who traveled from North Korea through uh, all the way through the DMZ into South Korea. And it was amazing. I didn't go to North Korea. I just produced the doc. It got millions of views. I went to New Zealand. I interviewed Kim.com. We had fun, exciting adventures. And it was edgy. It was offensive sometimes. It was silly. It was fun. The company at one point was worth $5.7 billion. It made a massive, it got tons and tons of investment. Today, people wonder if it's even worth $700 million. Shane Smith, the guy who started it all, along with Gavin McInnes and Sarushavi, but Shane was the, the, you know, the CEO for, the long, for a long time, is basically gone. What is Vice and why did it fall? It's really simple. Vice got woke and went broke. And it's the perfect example of how you destroy something and how the investors themselves have destroyed their investment. So look, Airmail talks about, he says, this would be Vice's moment. We have a narcissistic fabulous in the White House. There's rioting in the streets. The nation is the world leader in coronavirus. The country is mired in a deep recession. The rich keep getting richer and the poor keep getting poorer. Black Lives Matter movement has never been more potent. California and Oregon are burning up. This is the moment made for Vice Media in all its edgy millennialness. This would be it. And yet, what is the most popular TV show on Vice? Eh, it's about wrestling. You got a decent amount of views, I guess. This week, Vice News had a scoop that broke through Twitter. Jeff Tubin. We know that story. I'm not going to repeat it. To think that just three years ago, Vice News on HBO brought us Ellie Reeves' mesmerizing Charlottesville documentary. He goes on to say, most notable among employee turnover, turnover, however, is Shane Smith, Vice's larger-than-life co-founder who back in the day was known to have spent 300 grand on a board of directors dinner at the Bellagio. He had reportedly just won a million dollars. He resigned from the day-to-day -day management of the company after the New York Times revealed in December 2017 allegations about the sexist, misogynist side of the company's culture. Shocker. Some of Smith's bros found themselves accused of harassment and racial bias after having filled vice, vice with young, attractive women. By the time he left, though, Smith had already pulled many of his millions out of Vice and decamped to Los Angeles, where he and his wife, Tamika, restored a sprawling Santa Monica estate that had been featured in the shootout scene of Beverly Hills Cop. Smith sought it, bought it sight unseen for $23 million. And in 2016, the Wall Street Journal, in, in, uh, he invited them inside to film. This is the important point I want to get to. What happened in 2017 and why did Vice truly die? Well, to be honest, the changes were coming before 2017. And to be fair, I was only there for about a year and a half. I was there because uh, it took a long time to negotiate, but I convinced them to do real news on the ground reporting. They wanted to do something where it was like documentaries from the field. They would call it Vice News. I said, send me on the ground to cover these things. Initially, I was going to go to Ireland. I believe it was Ireland. And then Turkey's Gezi Park protests erupted. And I said, get me on a plane tonight. They did. The coverage got tens of thousands of views. It was, it was groundbreaking for them. And they were really excited and said, let's do legit news. I'll tell you what the problem was. It started to get a little unfun, to be completely honest, when I was there. And I don't want to be there anymore. So it's one of the reasons I left. And they weren't woke when I left. But they started to become woke because the investors wanted them to. And this comes from my conversations with former employees, executives, and high-ranking officials. The investors destroyed their own investment. I kid you not. Get woke, go broke. It wasn't really Vice's fault so much. I mean, in the end, it kind of was. Vice used to be super edgy and, and crazy and punk rock and fun. And we would parachute into crazy conflict and get criticized for it. 
But we were on the ground face to face with the danger telling you this is what we saw. We weren't some elites, some some J school graduate with a degree. I was some random dude from the south side of Chicago hopping on a plane and flying across the world and being like, yo, check this out. They were ridiculed early on, saying that you're just some random guys who show up, point at some poop and say, wow, look at that. And they said, so what? People liked that. It was authentic. It was the birth of this new era of authentic media, kind of like what you get when you watch me just talk randomly with no script. And then it started to change. It started to become more plasticky. But that wasn't what finished it off because they still did a good job having fun making these documentaries and being kind of, you know, loose and off the cuff. Something happened in 2017. Allegations emerged. The Me Too movement targeted some of the people at Vice. Now, what they could have done is said, screw you, we're Vice, kicked, you know, kicked a garbage can over and started romping about saying, now let's get back to punk rock. Instead, the investors... As I and, and I got to be careful, um, you know, I'm going to be fair. I had some conversations with some uh, former employees. So this is based on what I know, um, my experiences working at the company. And that was three years before all this happened. And then what ended up happening to the company based off of what former employees have told me. What I was told by a couple different people after these allegations came out and there had been some accusations in the past, Vice didn't know how to handle it. But more importantly, Instead of being the edgy punk rockers that people wanted them to be, they decided we're going to do what the investors want. We want a safe transition so we can sell this company. This airmail article makes a really interesting point. They mentioned that the goal of Vice at some point was to sell the company, to pump up its evaluation to a really, really high number and then just sell it out. Everybody gets rich. They say in the story, there are rumors that Shane Smith turned down a massive sale offer because it would not have made him a billionaire. He was a billionaire on paper, and if he sold it, he wouldn't have gotten there. Maybe that's true. I don't know. But I'll tell you what I heard, and I'll tell you what I experienced. When they got accused, instead of going punk rock, they decided to go woke. They thought going woke would save their evaluation. As most of you know, that's not how it works. They started to bring on more and more woke individuals and write more and more woke articles specifically because, as I'm told, and this may be incorrect, the woman they brought on because of Shane's past, you know, accusations, the woman they brought on, her name is Nancy Dubik, I I believe her name is pronounced, decided we are going to go feminist, intersectional, woke, progressive to attract the younger audience and protect ourselves from the allegations against the former people running this company. That's not what anyone wanted. That's not what young people wanted. And so the company is now shrinking. They've lost, I believe, I believe about a thousand employees. Their evaluation from once a multi-billion dollar venture has dropped dramatically. Why? They gave in to the insanity. How many people really want to go to Vice to see them complain about wokeness? I don't think anybody does. And at the same time, as we're seeing Vice is hurting and we're seeing calls for the Wall Street Journal, this is is coming out now, to to adapt to a younger audience and talk about race. My channel skyrocketing 100 million plus views per month across uh, on my channels, 100 million. I'm grateful to everybody who watches. My channels are now bigger than Vice News. No joke. I believe this channel actually is. Think about how crazy that is. That they could have kept me on. I could have saved that company. I could have made them huge. And now this channel, actually bigger than that, huh? It's kind of crazy to me. The investors came in and said, because of the accusations, we need an out. How about we just start giving in to the feminists and say, we'll be feminist, buy some feminist brands, things like that. They said, okay. My understanding is that the investors demanded it. And I think for the most part, Shane and the executives at Vice just wanted to make sure they got paid and didn't watch everything crumble. It was a mistake. Imagine what Vice would be today under my leadership. I'm going to go ahead and say it. Seriously, my channels bigger than Vice. Really amazing, huh? Now, I guess when you consider their websites, they claim to have like 340 million you know, views per month, which is substantially higher than mine. But that's the written stuff. I don't do the written stuff. Maybe I'll get to that point. On YouTube alone, though, my channels are massive compared to what Vice was. I'm confident that 
if I was reporting on the ground, if I was leading the charge and I was hiring people, it would be something way different. It would be huge, successful, probably evaluation would have gone way up. But that's one of the reasons I didn't want to be there anymore, because I knew, you know, in 2013, I told them to do this, what I'm doing right now. No joke. I said, we have an ample opportunity to just film the opinions of our journalists just to record them and say what's happening today alongside a Vice article, and then them giving you the personable and authentic breakdown. And they said, okay, and then never really wanted to do it because they didn't know how to do it, I guess. Instead, they decided to change the company and and, and go after this woke ideology, buy up other woke companies, hire more woke people thinking the same stupid idea that Fusion thought. Young people are all progressive, therefore we should just pander to them. It did well for Fusion, who sunk between 300 and a billion dollars down the toilet. Gone. Let that on fire. And now Vice, which was once once worth 5.7 billion and should have been the new Time Warner, is in the gutter because they got woke, because they didn't want to just be regular people. And now because of it, they have created a whole new network of, of insane people who believe insane things. You know, I do, I periodically do videos about Vice. I was only there for for just over a year, about a year and a half. So I'm not going to pretend to be this long-standing decades, you know, uh, OG employee. I wasn't. But I was the founding member of Vice News. And I'm I'm proud of the things they accomplished after I left. A lot of the stuff that I brought, the negotiations I had, made it exist in the first place. There was not going to be an on-the-ground news reporting. And now you can quote this from Shane Smith, who said it. They had no intention of doing this until I came and said, we got to do this. It took months of negotiating to finally get it to happen. And so I am bummed to see that I came there and said, here's what's up. And they took it and they flushed it down the toilet because they wanted to uh, go after this fringe leftist ideology. Here's what you need to understand. Perhaps it will be true that the audience you speak to changes. Perhaps it will be true that uh, they, or they age. What is your goal? Do you change your brand to attract younger people and betray your existing audience? Or do you just make content for everybody? Vice decided to change their brand to go after the youth. And that was wrong. And I do believe it was probably because of Nancy Dubik, Dubik or uh, Dubik or whatever her name is. I believe she contributed to the failures. They got rid of Shane and they deserve it. Shane was accused. They said, we're going to bring in someone else. He essentially got me too'd. This person did not know how to run the company, did not have the edge or the, the uh, charisma. And there you go. It's too bad, really. But I'll tell you this. I'm planning on some big things. As you know, we have Scanner, which is absolutely still up and running. It's just the, uh, there, sh- there should be notice about what's going on. I, I, don't, I don't run the editorial. That's the easiest way to put it. So the strategy and how the publishing happens is something uh, is beyond me. But I'm planning on a bunch of other things, too. So we're going to be expanding and growing and uh, we'll be bigger than Vice. I'll leave it there. I'll see you all tomorrow at 10 a.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out.